Hello folks, welcome to Tipcast, myself Shane Stapleton. We've no uh, Shane Brophy this week, so instead we've drafted in uh, Owen Brislan, who I think is more than an able deputy. How are things, Owen? Good morning, Shane. All good? Yeah. Um, well, look, let's get straight to it. Tipperary against Limerick this weekend. You've, I suppose, a foot in the Limerick camp by virtue of uh, coaching and managing Moan Lean. And obviously you won that All-Ireland Intermediate Club title there this past year. How are they feeling in the local area about this? In, and when I say local area, I mean up in Limerick. Yeah, um, I suppose they're, this is kind of, uh, this is something they're not used to now in the last few weeks. Um, okay, listen, I suppose not going to panic either because they got beaten by a pint, right? And when they lost one game. But there, you know, there is rumblings, though, that maybe things aren't as, well, aren't, aren't as well in the camp this year or... You know, people are starting to question: Should Kyle Hayes go back up eleven and this kind of stuff? So, when you hear these things going on, it's if from a very point of view, it's good because there must be a bit of uncertainty. But yeah, in general, in general, I wouldn't say there's any panic around that. Like, obviously, if, if if the result goes against them, against us, and at the weekend, there'll be serious panic then. But they kind of remind me a bit like Liverpool, don't they? The Liverpool season this year in the, in, the, in the Premiership, when they got bet one of the first one or two games, it was kind of like, ah, it'll be fine. The next thing, it just turned out to be a disaster of a season. Like so, so hopefully it'll be the same for Limerick. Do um do they have any kind of feelings of why things are like again? They beat Watford, Grant, but like they weren't that impressive. And then the last day, I mean, Clare, you know, like you said, it was a puck of a ball or whatever. But like, do they have any feeling of why, you know, it isn't flowing the way it was previously? Well, they don't because, you see, everybody's scratching their head because they had such a good league campaign. And mm. they were, they blooded so many people in the league, so many lads in the league. And like, even our own, like, Tony Cadolic got, got a good, he got a good bit of game time and that. And I suppose the only, I suppose, <sighs> Like they're the masters of time in their run for the last four or five years, and really peak at the right time. The question is, have they maybe got it wrong this year? I suppose we'll learn a lot. We'll learn it all on Sunday, like because we're all we're all second guessing the question again. We have to stress this: they've only lost one game, and they've lost it by a point. And like they didn't hurl well against Waterford and bet Waterford. They didn't hurl well the last day and got got pipped at the post. So uh, listen, like you have the likes of Sean O'Donnell in there now, right? That's analysing. What Tip are doing, what Limerick have done wrong, um, they and the big big help for them was to have that. I don't know how they managed it, but they got to get that three week break was just was ideal timing for them. Do you know what I mean? So I have no doubt um, that they'll have a lot of work done on that. But it's going to be very interesting to see, and we'll know we'll know after twenty minutes whether they're like. You can you can go out with all the best will in the world and then say, listen, we're up for the battle, and your head is saying one thing, but your body just might be able. So, listen, this this is a huge opportunity for Tipperary, like, massive. Yeah, because uh, obviously, if Cork beat Clare, Tipperary can knock Limerick out of the championship, or mm. even if Cork uh, beat Clare, defeat in either of the last two games will knock Limerick out. Like, is that a good or a bad thing that they're like, you know, at this stage they're backed into a corner, or is it like maybe we'll see a little bit of nervousness in their play? Well, that's what I'm saying. And you see, Sean Finn has gone as well in their inside back line. Mm. If you were to look at any line in their field, their inside back line would have been, OK, Barry Nash, super player going forward, excellent. But is he a top-class defender? Um, um, Mike Casey will probably come in there. Richie English, again, we've seen Richie English against Tip back in, in Cork a couple of years ago. He was taken off at half-time. Mike Casey, again, he can be vulnerable enough in the in the air and he's rash enough, like, you know, he's, he's a good defender, but um, he's not a Sean Finn. So, um, will that maybe uh, on, on, put, put, make him a bit uneasy in the half-back line that maybe they feel they have to sit a bit back? sit back a bit further and um, the midfield might have to sit back a bit further and that will, will that allow our half back line and we have scored half back line we bar- like Brian O'Mara, Ronan, these lads, Seamus Kennedy, Tyne and these boys can score from distance and that's where that's where the holes could come you know. Mm. And like in terms of Jason Ford being out do you see Mark Kyo coming in or do you know who hits the freeze now? Yeah, like Gerald O'Connor probably going the freeze. Mark, Hor- Mark, For- Mark Kyo came on and scored one forward last day mm. and again he has the legs inside, um, you know, himself and Jake. Jake was, uh, he was outstanding against Clare. He had a kind of a slow start against, uh, against Carper. Still finished up with three points in play. Had a good game. So, like, Jake is, is getting a bit of consistency, which we need. And, like, I'd be, listen, the thing for me would be, I'd be going at these lads. I'd be, I'd be getting the ball into our inside forward line as quickly as possible, and I'd be taking them on. I'd be running at them. And, and um, because I think, I think there is a bit of an ease in there. And um, like you, we even see that against Clare, like there was, there was, there was, there was what four, five goal opportunities. Like Nicky yeah. Quaid, at least three good saves. Do you know what I mean? So 
like you don't rectify all these little issues in three weeks either. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and and it is the work right there. I suppose the big thing for, for Limerick over the years was their half hour line coming out. Their, their, the guy at edge of the D, say the Peter Casey, coming back out to the middle of the field, or it was, it was Graham McKay, whoever, uh, come back crowding that half back. Thing. But Garota's not work. Garota's dropped the last day. He seems to be not a, not a happy camper. Um, he's not hurling particularly well. He had in a good league. Um, he's a huge, huge influence to that team. Um, Keane Lynch will come back. He's not hurling well either. He was non existent really the last day. That's why they're kind of looking for maybe for Keane to go in the middle of the field. Dar up in the middle of the field again is not hurling well. He's getting there's a lot of turnovers coming off him. So there's they have questions to to answer themselves. But I suppose the big thing for us and for us to, to, to concentrate on ourselves is that we've been doing well in that middle third against Cork and against, against Clare. Um, Tyne and Seamus Kennedy, these lads have been working really well and getting onto breaks and, and punishing teams. So if we can, I feel that if, okay, Limerick 100% are going to come out with all guns blazing, it's it's inevitable it's going to happen, right? But I suppose what we have to do is we have to match that and go at them and not stand off them and wonder what's going to happen. We have to really push the push, push thing here. And the other thing is, like the, the puck outs is a massive, massive thing for Limerick. Like, uh, like they're the biggest team, I think, that gets scores off the opposition's puck outs. So, like, our reset in the puck out has to be really quick. Like, we can't be delaying that because we can't allow Limerick. That's one thing that they're very good at is resetting back out under six seconds to get to get a puck out, uh, to, to, to defend the opposition's puck out and try and put you at e on, on ease. So if we can be really sharp on that and get the puck outs off, that will, uh, that will unease them, you know? Yeah, like, I don't know if you watched it, but like Dublin against Loud last week, Loud couldn't get out of their own half mm -hmm. with, the, with the way Dublin set up the kickouts. But yeah. the last few big games that Tipperary have played against Limerick, and I'm thinking, including the league semi final, obviously that Munster final a couple of years ago, that third quarter has killed Tipperary, where I don't know what it is, but Limerick are just reaming off score after score. Like, was it 110 or something to a point yeah. there in the last game? Obviously, there was a 16 point turnaround the last time. Like, you're, you've been a manager on the line for plenty of years at this stage. What do you do when there's a tsunami like that coming to sort of send the flow? Do you make a load of substitutions at one go to bring in energy? Do you try to cynically go down with the sort of Nicky Quaid contact lens? What do you do? Well, listen, you have to stop it. And like you, you in, in training, like we don't, you be playing little mini games and training. If a team gets three scores in a row, you be telling them to kill it, kill it some way. Like let it be, let it be, let it be whatever. Start a bit of a, a ferocious, like whatever it is. Like you go back to that game. Two years or a couple of years ago below in Cork, right? Um, we had the ideal opportunity to stop that game with with the Carl Barrett incident. Do you know what I mean? And that could have been kind of all pushing and shoving for 30, 40 seconds a minute, get the get the referee over, make a big deal about it, pushing and shoving, no one gets sent off, grand, but just stim it. Like uh, but I I suppose if you're I don't know if it's if you compare like with like and, and we'll see now on Sunday, but I think on the, in the in the in the in the, in the third quarter this year we're better equipped. I think I think we're fitter. I think we're um, we've better uh, more energy energetic bodies around that middle third um, that can stay going and are actually really enjoying the, the battle and the breaks getting onto them breaks. Um, I think for the last couple of years we have been totally gassed out that we went hell for letter in the first first half an hour and next thing after half time we just had nothing there and 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 they they. They figured us out, and next thing they nailed us. Do you know what I mean? But we hadn't the bodies to. And I suppose if you look at it now, would say, okay, Jason's gone, Mark Yo came in, even John McGrath had come in, you have a bit of experience. Shamey came in the last day. That don't like even to bring on Shamey, Shamey Cannon again. I don't think he'll start, but bring him on for ten or fifteen minutes. He's a huge experience to bring on in, inside, and he seems to be move, moving well. But to answer your question on that, if a team gets to running you right, you have to stop it, and whether it be. It would be a substitution, or would it be? It's it's mainly has to come from the players that they have to stop it. The goalkeeper slows it down, whatever. Do you know what I mean something? It mainly comes from the goalkeeper slowing the whole thing down and just getting the breath and getting a reset. And normally, what happens as well is you'd have a go-to puck out that maybe an overload puck out or something like that 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 you can go to that maybe that if you if you don't win it, at least you're you're not letting them win it and and attack you again. You know. Yeah. So one of the things that people were talking about after the last game was this sort of, you know, a little to and and fro between Will O'Donoghue and Alan Tynan. It, that's going to be a serious area in this game. I think Tynan will definitely want to lay down a marker. He seems like the abrasive type on the field. I'm sure you've seen him plenty of times with yeah. Ross Gray as well. But Will O'Donoghue, he doesn't mind it either. 
No, and he's a again Limerick playing the edge. And listen, that's what you want. Like at the end of the day, these guys are major competitors and and serial serial winners, right? So for, for like from a tip point of view, we have to get into their faces. Simple as that. Like these boys think these new lads now think they have a God given right to beat us and to win all Ireland. So like like you have to you have to get into their faces and you have to upset them and you have to go for their throat. It's as simple as that. And you have to you have to uh in a sense bully them, right? And and like they won't like it. It's as simple as that because um they're not used to it, they don't want to it's in, 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 you go back to the last day against Claire and the same thing around. Claire just in that middle third bullied them instead going at him as they go at him and the puck outs they kept the puck outs really, really quick. Didn't allow him reset, and Limerick were at six and sevens that day. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, the, the likes of Willard who the likes of Seamus Kennedy, Dan McCormack, Ronan, and Brian O'Mara, all these lads. But the most important people on the field next weekend for us is our half forward line and our inside forward line. Whoever plays, whoever plays in there, because it's actually the tackling coming back out the field, tracking their backs, putting the hook in from behind. That's the tackles that win you the games. There's where the turnovers come from. It's not from the from our backs. If our backs are tackling a lot, we're in serious trouble. If our t- need to tackle high, highly, you know. Yeah. So like Michael Breen and um, and Johnny Ryan and I suppose Kyle Barrett. Obviously, Kyle Barrett's been there a lot over the years, but Michael Breen is still readjusting, I suppose, to a new position. This will only be his third championship game ever playing in the full back line. Johnny Ryan's in his first season, his third ever game. Barrett was injured a lot during the league, so he hasn't had a chance to play with them in an awful lot. Like, it's a lot to ask them to, like, they really need help, basically, from the outside because they haven't that much experience together back there. Yeah, they haven't. But the only thing about it is, again, at Limerick, is that they're a bit different to everybody else. Like, we conceded about seven goals in the last two games. Grand. But, like, Limerick aren't really a goal-getting team, right? They're, 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 Limerick are happy to tap over 30 points and win the game. Right, so like obviously, what's going to happen is Galan is going to stay inside, Flanagan will stay inside. I presume we'll put Breen on like Flanagan and put and and uh, let Barrett with Galan, right? And then you let let Johnny, I presume he's going to start, he'll follow up Peter Casey and let him follow him. And if you're playing too, the one thing about the one thing about Breen and the one thing about Barrett, we have pace in there now, right? And you're not you're not going out paces in there. And the one thing about him is like if they do win the ball, I've just stand them up. Let them shoot way over their shoulder. That's fine. You're going to concede points, but once we once we don't concede the couple of goals, um, I think once we don't once we don't concede, I think we'll get goals. And if we can, and, and like the one as such is Limerick, they're not really potent, really really running at you, attacking, attacking, attacking. As such, they're happy to shoot outside. So I'd be happy enough with Breen and Barrett inside. I think they'll be fine. And listen, they're like the two of them have enough experience on the big day, and especially against Limerick. To, to cope with this, you know what I mean? And we know, like, we all know what Olympia's going to do. We know what Galan's going to do. He's going to try and run to the side, win the ball, turn over his shot. So that's grand. You try and put him off. You try and get there first. But you're right. The half back line coming backwards to support. If we do break that ball down, there's someone coming in to, win, to help him out, win the break. But it just, we'd be very careful too because sometimes you, players can get drawn to the ball. So. Glenn's going out to the side. Next thing, the centre back, wing back comes back in to help Carl. Next thing, there's a, there's a runner going through the middle, and that's where the goal comes out of. So sometimes you're better off to stick with your own man, go man for man, and concede the point. It's fine. Move on to the next one. Yeah, I'm even thinking of last year when Galway put Cahill Mannion more or less back as a sweeper in the first 20 minutes to stand in the way of the ball going into Galan in that right corner as we look at it. Yeah. And they still hit such accurate ball, they were able to bypass him anyway. So they're, they're such a good heads up team. But just in terms of like the the matchups that Tipperary will look for in the back line, are you thinking, assuming Hegarty starts, maybe he will, maybe he won't, Seamus Kennedy on him, maybe Dan McCormick on Tom Morrissey, and then that would leave, maybe Keen Lynch will be centre forward, maybe he won't start, I'm not sure, but maybe Brian O'Mara picking up the other, or or where will Ronan even fit in there? Yeah, I, I, I'd be honest, I would go with our, with our backs, our six backs in their positions, right? And I would set up the way we're comfortable setting up. I wouldn't be worried about two because like at the end of the day, you're talking about Carole Hegarty, Tom Morrissey, you're talking about Keane Lynch, you're talking about like, does it really matter, right? They're one of them as good as the other, right? So if, for me, I would set up that our players are comfortable in their positions. They're receiving the puck out on their side, whatever it is, that we're, they've obviously done a lot of work on the puck outs and that we're comfortable, that we're attacking the ball on the right side and the right wing and that you're delivering the ball to the same to the same sides. That, that I think for us, that's because, as I said, Limerick are... They're equally as strong across their, their six forwards. There's no real weak link there. The only thing about it is that is that there's a small bit of a question mark about their their work rate, their energy, and their 
hunger. Hunger is the big thing at the minute. Is are they really up for the battle at the moment? And if we can, if our half back line just stop that ball going through and stop bringing it to the ground, it'll really upset these lads and 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 stick with our men. Just go man for man, as simple as that. And wherever they go, go with them. And okay, you might have four defenders at some times, you might have five defenders. But listen, we've got some pace back there. Uh, we've, we've got some pace in the full back line. Okay, Ronan. Ronan, uh, there's a question mark over Ronan that can he, can he be exposed? Um, but again, I think if we go man for man, Ronan is fine. And the one thing about Ronan, and Brian, and 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 um, and, and Seamus Kennedy, and Seamus Kennedy proved last day, we can score from 60, 70, 80 yards out. And that's, I think, an area that we need to be that if if it's available, have a go. And um, well, that 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 would really hurt them, you know. What do you do about Kyle Hayes, assuming he's wing back? <clears throat> well, this is the big thing. There's just talks of Kyle Hayes to be centre forward now. So, mm. um, Kyle Hayes, Kyle Hayes at wing back is a huge issue, isn't he? Like, he, mm. you, have, you know, is, um, he has to be tracked. And I suppose if he gets in a run, he has to be fouled early. It's as simple as that. He has to be taken down. I'm going to go back to that game against uh, Tip two years ago inside in Cork. He was let run the whole way from the 65, the whole way in and hang the ball up. And that, that man should be fouled 40 yards out the field. Tap the ball over the bear. Do you know what I mean? No questions asked. That, simple as that. Uh, you stay with him for as long. You try and win the ball off him. You get bodies around him. But if you don't, then he gets in a run and you just take him down. Simple. And I'm looking at the tip forward line that played in the league semi final. And you had Noah McGrath, you had Jason Ford, Bonner Maher. Probably, you know, they've all been on the road a long, long time. And the first game out, John McGrath started. And, you know, the, the commentary around them is, you know, maybe they're not overly fast or you know not overly young lots of miles on the clock like what sort of forward line like do Tipperary need to have you know obviously Jason Ford can't play but Grodo O'Connor obviously a young man Jake Morris Mark Kyo maybe even Connor Bowen I know he was brought on and taken off but I just I really do rate him I think he's an excellent player like do we need as much energy as possible on the field to compete because they they can all hurl anyway oh yeah but you need energy but you need composure too so mm. we don't it just it's just getting the balance right. I think we go the same six fours last day. I think we put Mark Hugh in and that's it. Maybe well Sean Ryan is a question mark over Sean Ryan. I thought Sean did very well in the first 10, 12 minutes last day. He had three he got two positions and he got a point. Uh but okay, the last 15, 14, 15 minutes then he lost three positions. So it was kind of it was it was a pep to the fire for him. But again, is he a really good player to bring on the last 10 for energy? Do you know what I mean? Are you better off to go with John McGrath? Jake Morris and Mark Hugh on side. Now you have, <clears throat> now you have uh, a bit of experience with John. That Johnny, you know, if he gets the ball, he'll slot it over. He'll always move into the right position. And the one thing about this is, if you're running at defences, you need people with brains and that will go into the right position and be just like you don't need to be fast. You just need to be smart. And I think if it was me, I'd be going inside forward and Mark Hugh, Jake Morris, and John McGrath. And as well as that, then if the, if Corona Connor are hitting the freeze, he was. He was so so the last day. If things did go against him, at least you have John McGrath there to, to, to stand over, you know. But like the beauty about it though, Shane, is that at least now we have players to come on. Do you know, mm -hmm. like you have like you have Shamey, you have Sh uh, Connor Bow, you have Sean Ryan maybe to come on. The Bonamar has come on, different type of player. But again, you could put Bonner on there with ten minutes to go to track Kyle Hayes, to, to stop him, to work him, just do nothing else. Just if you're if you're three or four points up, just to come on and Win that, um, nullify that half back line. Have someone right to puck out to kind of that can that can hold possession. You know, so listen for the first time in a while. I suppose it's exciting for Tipperary player, for Tipperary people that we're going we're going with some bit of hope now that we can like we proven the last couple of times that we we can match them for thirty or forty minutes. Now can we go a bit step further? Limerick seems to be a bit vulnerable, but the big question about Limerick is are they? They could easily come out and absolutely destroy us at the same time. Do you know what I mean? They could really have to be between the heat now and but I, I, I don't think they will. I think we're we're better equipped. I think we've a bit of confidence. As I say actually we're fitter, we're stronger and we've we've more energy in that middle third. So hopefully. And like the puck outs against Claire I thought at times we were we were all at sea and probably didn't drop deep enough or whatever because again like I look back to the All Ireland last year and I think Kilkenny nearly threw away their chances just by pushing too far up on the puck out and it meant that there was oceans of space for the half forward line. So the puck out there that'd be a bit of a concern. Like have Tip kind of learned from the last couple of games to be better there, and then also going the other way. Remember against Clare, a lot of the time it was Clare really dropped off. We'd turn go short to Breen or O'Mara to turn. There was no real movement for the short one. There was no one looking to work off each other's shoulders, so it was just blasted up, up the field. 
And as you know, there's about 80 puckouts in a game. Like, mm -hmm. where else is, are there 80 opportunities to try and set yourself yeah. up? Yeah, that's what I said earlier on. It's the puck out. The puck outs are massive. Um, from from defending Nicky Quay's puck out and getting our set up right there and knowing when to press and when not to press, um, and that maybe who to leave free. I'd believe in my case, he's free all day. Right, I wouldn't leave Barry Nash free. Um, do you know what I mean? No way. I I I'd push up and I'd I'd leave Casey free if he was starting. But from our puck out point of view, what you're saying there is you're 100 percent right. Like we need to we need to trust our halfbacks. I I'd be really looking for Brian Amara a lot with the puck outs. If I, if if they were sitting back, uh, I'd be putting one of our cornerbacks or I'd be putting Barrett out to the side. If they're only if they're playing two inside, which you do, I'd line up my three inside and have two two narrow and one out the side, and I, I'd 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 have my one out the side as, as Barrett because Barrett is good in the ball, but. I wouldn't be going long every time from the car back down down because the ball's in the air too long. I'd 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 work it. I'd try and hit Brian, hit Ronan, hit Seamus Kennedy. That basically you're fizzing that ball across into it, maybe 30, 40 yard pass into the middle. And but but you're what you're saying there is right. It's the second movement is the thing. And when the ball goes short, it's who's moving next. Right, that and <clears throat> what a lot of teams are doing is to, to move away from the full back line, whereas they should be moving towards them to give them an option. So, listen, but like I'm sure, listen, Liam and Mikey and the boys will have that well, well sussed out, and we, we, we will have learned. Uh, and listen, Claire learned a lot from our game, we learned a lot from our game, we learned more from the Cork game the last day. Um, but it that is a key area because you're right to say we'll, <clears throat> we'll have 35, 40, 35, 36, 38, 38 puck outs, and we have a goalkeeper that is willing to hit it. No issue. He's he'll pull into your paw 30, 40 yards away, 50, 60 yards away. So but it's the movement for it, you know. And if we can if we can win that battle actually, or even break even, if we can break even that battle with with their puck outs and our puck outs, because remember now, um they get used on the scores, they're the top in the country for, for turn out getting scores off your puck out. So if we can win that battle, we'll be doing well. Yeah, and tip that I think it was twenty uh turnovers in the middle third against Cork and scored nine points from it. Sean Flynn had that stat as well, which is a huge one. Like this middle area that Tipperary have now, like Connor Stakelam only came on the scene really under Conan Bodder last year, was was excellent mm -hmm. last year because, you know, he's a fighter. When a team's under pressure, you can never have enough fighters. And Alan Tynan, did you expect Alan Tynan, you know, he finished up a rugby a couple of years ago. It didn't happen partly, you know, due to injuries and whatever in the last few years, but by God, his performances the last few days have been good. Yeah. And even we played Ross Gray this year in the Munster final in Cork with Mo and Lean. He was a guy that we targeted now to man to man mark. And <clears throat> I suppose the big thing for Alan Tynan was this. Alan Tynan came back last year, started last year. He 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 really had to change his body set up to go from rugby to hurling. And that doesn't happen overnight, right? Um he he put in a tough year last year because he had a load of niggly injuries and he missed a lot of games and lots of training. It, I'd say the pre-season again this year, I'd say his body is just after adapting to hurling again and that his mobility and his step and his work rate and his strike and his, his back. So it's not it's not really a surprise to to the people around because he was such a good minor and stuff, right? But I suppose it was the question was, could he transition back? And he's proven now that he's well back and he's a, a big, big plus to Tipperary. Like, because he's, he's everything that we were lacking himself and Connor Stakelin were everything that we were lacking in that middle. That middle, this they have energy, <clears throat> they're good to read the breaking ball. And when they get a ball, they can stick, they can score. And they, they hurl with their head up, which is, which is, which is, they're, they're hard lads to find, you know. Mm. Um, so, Nick on the block, then who's going to win this? Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's this very tricky one, isn't it? Like, because. Mm. You like, you know, your heart be saying Tipperary, you'd be hoping to God we can get one over them. But like, like, I suppose there's a like, there's so many relations here with Limerick. Like, they could, they could literally come out and and blow us apart. Sean and Paul Kinnerk are such shrewd operators that they God only knows what they've up their sleeve. But in saying that, <clears throat> from a Tipperary point of view, we have to be confident. Um, we're after like we've three points on the board, right? It's a game that. There's no real pressure on us. The pressure on us is the pressure we're putting on ourselves. Like we, like uh, Tipperary, I don't, don't you know Liam Cal and Mikey now, and the lads and the players, they'll want to perform against Limerick and they'll want to show, listen, they'll have confidence got from the last couple of games and they'll want to, they'll, like, they'll want to win the game. It's nice that we have Waterford in the last game, right? That, that listen, we should be beating Waterford in qualifying anyway, right? You, that, you can't take that for granted, but, but I suppose, but listen, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say a tip. I think I think we have a good opportunity. I think 
I think that if we can if we can bring the confidence and we can attack them, I just hope we don't stand off them. If if we go at their throats and go at them and work hard and really go, take the game to them and 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 the first couple of balls go into their inside line, run at them. To go, really lay down the marker and take them on, and and then on on Nicky's pokeouts, like push up, put, leap, isolate one guy, like and then man mark the rest and let them force them to go along then and really really bring the game and really bring the game plan to them and put them thinking rather than rather than us reacting to what they're doing. Let's let's really go at them and then unleash the few the the, the bit of fresh legs in at half time, and again don't be slow. When lads are when lads are nearly gassed, <clears throat> lift them and bring in the fresh legs. Don't be don't again don't be reacting to when we're under pressure. Bring them on early and and keep keep it going. So no, listen, I'm confident. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I say I'm I'm I, I'd be very very hopeful and coming that, that we can get a result. You know. Yeah, I just need probably a quicker start than against Cork the last day because Tip Rawl at yeah. the first five minutes. And the other thing is those two games that we've talked about, 2021 and the league semi-final, mm. Tip have kind of waited until the 50-odd minute before they started making subs and probably, you know, the game was gone at that stage. So if it is going against Tip after 38, 40 minutes, just maybe try and unload the bench at that stage. But even if you went back to that half time of that game against in, in against Limerick and over 10 lines up, but that was maybe a time to make a got one or two fresh legs. Do you know what I mean? When you're on top, do you know what I mean? And 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 have them and have them like I said, just it's when you're on top, you're bringing new energy and new new. Uh, because when a, when a team starts to get momentum, I mean, momentum on you, it's very hard to change that around. Then you know, but uh, no, it's what do you think, Shane? Um, yeah, I'm like you. I'm a bit torn, and maybe it's just the heart over the head thinking yeah. that maybe Tipperary can win this, but. The fact that there's a bit of a release valve there with knowing you can beat uh, mm. Waterford and still be true kind of makes you think, is it more do or die for Limerick than it is for Tipperary? Which depends on what happens between Cork and Clare before that as well. Um, actually, speaking of, of Tipperary up against Waterford the last day, what do you think's gone wrong with Waterford? Losing tw by 12 points to Waterford, of course, was the red card to Caelan Lyons. But they did well enough against Limerick, very well, should have won. And then it's just been a bit of a disaster since. Yeah. Well, sure, if you're going to listen to David Fitz, he's going to try and keep blaming Liam Cal for as long as possible, isn't he? He'll come. He said it's it's ridiculous. Like I don't know what's going on down there. They're, they're, the whole county seems to be on a. It's, it's if you're comparing if you're comparing the likes of Clare and Watford, Clare are on a serious bounce on minors, twenties, seniors. Watford pillar opposite. They just can't win a game at any level, and um, they're in serious trouble. And and there's a lot of bad press coming out from a lot of legends down there. So. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Davy's tactics were madness as well. So um, he, he's 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 got him wrong. He's got he's got definitely a couple of couple of decisions badly wrong in a couple of games. But I don't know. Is it is it the players' attitude? Is it is it the, is it the expectations? Is it? I don't know. I don't know what it is. You'd have to be closer to the camp down there to see. But I suppose when you look at them on paper, they're not that bad. Like they can't, like they're. <laughs> Like it's it's hard to figure out because we've seen these players perform so well against Limerick when Limerick were under pump. They were the only team that were able to really put it up to Limerick in the last three or four years. But maybe it has its toll. Maybe it's maybe they're maybe they're, they're, they're three or four key players. Like Austin Gleason looks to be a, a man that was totally spent. Do you know the, the Bennett's okay, the couple of wise Bennett's missing, but Shane Bennett is like seems to be they don't seem to be fit. That's that's the other thing. Like is Jamie Barron. Like he was a major, major engine in the middle of the field. Is is the energy gone from him? Do you know what I mean? So like these boys have okay, they might not have one of the whole pile, but there's a lot of miles in the clock too. Like so, it's interesting to see. But the game, the other game, obviously that we're very interested in is is is, is Cork and Clare. Um, and it'll be interesting to see before. Obviously, we know the result before our game, so it's um, it's it'll be interesting to see. I think I fancy Clare in that game. I think it's a hard task for for Cork to go to Clare to 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 win that game. I do fancy Clare to win that because like that game is is really winner takes all. And for Cork, like if Cork lose, it's winner sure. takes all against Limerick. So like yeah. I think there's huge pressure on them there. Huge, huge, and uh, that's and like you you couldn't look past Clare at the moment. Um, I actually think they're the form team in the country at the moment. You know, and we we okay we bet him by okay we were handed their, their goalkeeper gave us a, a couple of soft goals but um so but on pay on since then they look to be don't they, they look to be going well and look to have a bench now Aidan McCarthy and, and McInerney there's two question marks over them they'd be two massive losses but I think McCarthy's not serious but will they risk him against Cork I don't know 
you know, they're, kind of, they nearly have to though, in a way, because they still need a result before the end of the year. They can't be guaranteed that the well, like this is their last game, so they actually have to. They have to, yeah. This is the, uh, they, so they have to. If he's if he's anyway right at all, they have to play him. He's a good player. Uh, McInerney is having probably his best season for a while. Um, really, really, really good defender. But um, no, it's it'll be it'll be it'll be very very interesting. I suppose the weather is coming up. The the sun is coming out. The ground is getting. It actually feels like championship. It didn't really feel like championship three or four weeks. So sure didn't. Like it's, no, it's like, not and then, no. and then, like, so Cork and Clare is actually possibly in a way a meeting of the two paciest teams around. Like, if you look at that forward line. Tony mm-hmm. Kelly, he might be around midfield, but Shane O'Donnell, Mark Rogers, Ed McCarthy, obviously, there's there's definitely another pay, Ryan, Ryan Taylor. Taylor, fine player, number 11, serious player, serious yeah. player. And then obviously Cork have paced to burn all over the place, Dara Fitzgibbon, Lahan. Yeah. And I wonder when will Jack O'Connor come back into the fray, or is he just going to be the forgotten man, really? Because just when the ground is hard, he has all the pace. Yeah, well, that's that's it. But I, I suppose, but even from, from me and from Claire, like me and then Shannon to come on off the bench, like they have a bench now as well. Which they mm. didn't, have, you know what I mean? And you're right, Jack O'Connor. Is, is, I, I suppose the trust isn't people. Or people don't really have the trust in Cork yet. Really, do they? They haven't yeah. really done it to to say right. Okay, listen, these boys can come up winning. They can come up win now. Okay, win the twenties. They're nice. Will be a good show on to them too. But like, you'd have to fancy Claire, wouldn't you? To be fair, yeah, you, you certainly would. Just the the games then in in Leinster to briefly talk about, and more so, I suppose, Dara Egan. He's going to be with the Wexford team who are uh, at home to Westmead. They drew yeah. with them last year. And then you yeah. have Darren Dar- Egan, uh, sorry, Darren Gleeson, I should say, take an Antrim up to Galway. You'd expect that's going to be a bit of a turkey shoot for, for um, Galway. Yeah, well, I was actually with Derek McNicholas yesterday for a few hours. So uh, it would work. So, Westmead uh, forward. Yeah, so he's he actually could be starting again now. He's 36 years of age. He actually got to go last year to draw the game against Wexford. Mm. Launching ball and he doubled on it. But yeah, listen, Dave. The foot that Westmead have no fear of, of, of Wexford. Like these boys, when I was managing DIT, I had Derek and had Jack Guiney, had Lee Chin, Conor McDonald, Ed Isle was with Westmead as well, with us as well. So a lot of these lads would have played together and know each other very, very well. So there's no actual fear there at all. Now you'd have to fancy, obviously, you have to fancy. Um, Wexford to win that game and come out comfortable enough for that game because obviously they were they were caught in the hop last year, but like. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is. T- the other game. The other game is 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 Galway and, and Antrim again. Antrim have probably been have have really stepped up, haven't they? And and again, they're kind of knocking on the door. They're 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 they're, they're making progress every single year, aren't they? They're they're like they're like you have to say that right? Okay, listen, Galway will be but it'll be between themselves and Westmeath, and and Westmeath will go back down and whatever. Do you know what I mean? But in fairness, Darren, Darren, he's done a smashing job up there. Like you know, Dara's under pressure. But the one thing about Dara is they should beat Westmeath now. They have they have Kilkenny in in Wexford, so like you can like the one thing Wexford are always so good at home, and the crowd, no matter what, they'll always go back them, and they'll always get a result down there. So you wouldn't you you'd nearly fancy uh, even even though they're not going great, you'd nearly fancy fancy Wexford to to get a result there, you know. So it'll be to be interesting. Yeah, Wexford Park is some place to yeah. like a packed out Wexford Park. The time they dethroned Clare as All Ireland champions, it was twenty fourteen. Like that was some atmosphere down there. Brilliant atmosphere, and just whatever it is down there, it just it and they're just, but they're they're they're, they're, they're supporters are kind of really loud and whatever it is, they're, they're they get behind them and they're, you know, they're a really proud uh, proud county, you know. But and they're hurting now. I was, I was talking to most of Billy, I'd be good friends with Billy Byrne there, and he does the radio down there on Wexford, the, the famous Billy Byrne. But like they're hurting now, and 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 um, you know, like this championship is not over for them as, as far as they're concerned. Like, because they're, they're, they're just feel they're not clicking. A couple of things aren't working, and but like I say, listen, if they get it together, they have to have. If but I suppose when you're looking at Leinster championship compared to Munster, they, they, they seem to be miles apart, don't they? Yeah, they do indeed. Like so, Kilkenny against Wexford will be in, in the last round, like you're saying there. Is there any hope that Dublin could somehow spring a surprise at Nolan Park this week and beat Kilkenny, which would mean Kilkenny's championship hopes rely, you know, on on winning in Wexford? Yeah, a hundred percent. Again, Dublin has been kind of up and down, like the drew against Antrim, didn't they? And and um, you know, so but then beat Wexford. Beat Wexford, but again, how good are Wexford going? So like, it's 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 a bit of hit and miss. Uh, how good are Kilkenny? The game I watched the game with Kilkenny in Galway. 
And to me, it was like Kilkenny were, were giving Galway a four or five point hammering, and Galway still still came back and drew the game. It was just, I, to me, it, it it didn't have the 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 cut and trust of a of a championship game. It was like two teams saying, "Listen, come here, should we see in the Munster final?" Anyway. Do you know what I mean? It was like going like not going through the motions, but it, it didn't seem to have that real edge to it. Do you know what I mean? But um, it'll be. It'll be very interesting if Dublin, if Dublin, and uh, come here, like you know, the Dublin, Dublin's up better, better than anybody. Like, they're, they're like, they, they have the players that can hurt you, like, and, and you know, the Dubs, if they get on top of you at all, and they won't fear Kenny at all either. They, they'll relish that, won't they? they? They should relish it. The problem is they just keep not performing against them. Like last year, it took a bit of a bait, and a couple of years ago, went 16 points behind, and then ended up coming yeah. back level before yeah. they all are winners. So, like, they have it to put it up to Kenny. It's just like, like Owen Cody's playing so well. Adrian Mullen is such a class player. We'll see how TJ goes. If he's up against Owen O'Donnell and Owen O'Donnell's ankle is right, because, you know, it wasn't right the last day. Right. I think Owen O'Donnell will probably give him, you know, he'll lock him down pretty well. He generally does. Um, just don't, I just don't think the Kilkenny, the, 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 I, I, it's not Dublin are getting better. I think Kilkenny are coming back, are in Leinster, are coming back to the pack. And that's the issue. Like, that's, it's, the standard isn't a, a huge high standard anymore, but like it was, so... They're, again, they're all capable of beating each other, aren't they? Like they're, they're really are. Yeah, they really are. And like Donald Burke, then what would you do with him to try and get him on the front foot? Would you try and throw him in centre forward and see if Richie Reid will mark him, or will Kilkenny bring back a specialist man marker for him no matter what and leave Richie free? I'd put him in the edge of the D and let him roam everywhere. I play two inside put him in the edge of the D and let Donald Burke roam everywhere and and let let, let Kilkenny worry about him because he's the type of player that if. Um, like you were saying, try and get him on the ball, but like I'd be looking for him and I'd be giving him a free roll in, in behind the half forward and coming through the pockets there. That basically the ball comes down, he's on the breaks, the midfielder's coming through, he can pop past to him. Because in fairness to him, like there's he's a serious shot, he's as he's a bit like Jason Ford for us. Any little half chance at all, he's nailing them, isn't he? Like he doesn't miss. Oh, he's a class player. So, um, just before we finish, is there any particular team that you're thinking is the outstanding favorite for the All Ireland this year? Because I'm at a loss, like if Limerick get knocked out, it's anyone's. Oh, like if you ever get locked out, I fancy Clare. Yeah. I, I think I think that uh but like come here, obviously we're Limerick if Limerick get knocked out, we, we could be here now seven days later saying, Listen, Limerick are a roaring favourites again. Do you know what I mean? So it's they're they're far from gone. But but if if Limerick do get knocked out, I think the form team is clear. I think they'll they'll improve. They're a real county that play that they play in confidence. But in saying all that, then again, I, I like it's actually clear tip. It, uh, that's that's where it is, uh, and like I, I think they're the top three teams in in, in in the country at the moment. I don't I don't fancy Cork. I think I think we have Cork's number all day long, right? I think we should have bet them well the last day. Um, um, obviously Waterford are gone. Um, you know, I Galway or Kilkenny don't frighten me. Do you know what I mean? But I, I know. But again, on any given day, either of them could they, they could beat you on a given day. But the consistently, the only thing that I'll catch Claire was was that the question mark over Claire was a bit like last year was, will they run out of steam? Mm. Daughter, will the energy go? Because like if you take last year like that extra time in the Munster final that battle against Limerick, they weren't able to move the next day like they were they were under like the, but they seem to have injected it like the Aidan McCarthy back and you know, Ryan Taylor being more experienced and that like the means they seem to have. A, more meet more legs. They've they've Shannon to come on for Duggan, so they've they've a couple of options in each position in their far line, which is a help, you know. But mm -hmm. yeah, my 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 straight answer to you is if Limerick get knocked out, my fancy is there. Yeah, you have a beautifully teed up for the weekend and for the season ahead. Owen, thanks very much, and we'll chat again soon. Thanks, Jay. Talk soon. Okay, so that's it for the show this week. We'll be back next week and we'll have uh, Shane Brophy back in tow. Uh, any thoughts, uh, leave your comments there and we'll hopefully get to them again next week. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel and pick up a copy of the Nina Guardian. It's available in uh, all local shops now.